Hello everyone, it is Scompy. I am just out here, uh, you probably saw my post um, some places online about how a couple days ago I made myself into a 9G antenna with my truck turning on my cell phone. That was fun, had an eye issue happen. Um, within 15 seconds, blammo, I got this big visual, visual spot, kind of like an, almost like an aura appearing in my vision. Typically that can mean a uh, capillary is about to burst or there's a lot of pressure in the back of my retina. Um, nothing bad happened because I went and I hugged a tree. It wasn't this tree. Uh, I am down at the river right now, which is about maybe a three minute walk away from my house, which is kind of nice. I'm actually grounding right now. I'm sitting on a rock, you can see. Um, but you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to just go up here and sit, lean against the tree while I give this video. I had an idea, kind of a topic on my mind. All right, kind of like pushing my back against the tree. Um, it is cold out here. It's probably, I don't know, maybe it's like 28 degrees, something like that. Um, this next week is going to be finally be warming up. All the snow will be going away. Probably this time next week it will be gone. So it'll be an interesting video if I shoot this uh, seven days from now. See a comparison what it looks like. So yeah, I was sitting down there for a good 10 minutes just relaxing and soaking in the sun, the sun's up there, believe it or not. Um, I did some measurements. I always usually take this out here just to see what's going on each time of year, each day of the year. Right now I'm still getting UVB1 through the clouds and occasionally the sun, I can see it popping out a little bit. Oh, I spotted a squirrel. Let's see if I can zoom in here. Um, it's right by the tree. I don't know if you're picking that up. Wow, a squirrel. Actually, on the way down here, I saw three deer, which is pretty cool, but I don't think they're going to make it all the way down here this far to the river. Um, there's like a cliff between me and where the deer is up above. But this video, I thought I would talk a little bit about vaccines, of all things. Um, it's not going to be what you think it's going to be about. So, I have ideas about vaccines just like everyone does. Um, whatever your premonitions, whatever your precepts, whatever your paradigms, everything you have about vaccines is probably built on, you know, everything you've read, everything you've seen. But I'm going to talk about it from my perspective. Um, there's that cute little squirrel is running across the bridge. Uh, I don't know if I can see him. Okay. My perspective on vaccines have a lot to do with my own experiences with things like with what I was talking about at the beginning of the video, where I have visual effects from EMFs and they can appear just a direct one-to-one -one correlation in my world, in my life. And for that reason, um, there are certain things I've correlated in my diet like with food or if I do things like I've gone, you know, in the past and gotten also uh, not vaccinations, but shots or other things or I've taken antibiotics, you know, this is like 10, 15, 20 years ago even. And in looking back on all those experiences and thinking about just knowing about, you know, voltage gated calcium channels and knowing about re redox potential and knowing about inflammation and knowing about all of these processes now, um, it can be very easy for anyone out there to jump the gun about vaccines in my mind um, until you kind of like see things from all the different angles. Now, vaccines are kind of like an analog to me in my world, like a, like touching a cell phone, picking it up right when it's connecting to the cell phone tower. <laughs> or it can be also in my world, like if I eat a really high concentration packed 
meal of MSG monosodium glutamate. Um, these things in my system at the wrong times can act as catalysts. Uh, that's the best way I can put it. So sometimes I can go eat and splurge on a higher glutamate meal and have no issues, reactions at all. And these days, in the last couple years, I can get away with eating a lot more like Parmes Parmesan cheese or get away with eating even a higher glutamate meal, some more mushrooms, uh, which is higher glutamate. Or I could do like, um, you know, if I do a juicer and I do some celery and some cucumber and some beets. Now beets are really high in glutamic acid, which is not the salt version of glutamate. But because it's adding an extra level of glutamic acid at a certain time, then think about like, okay, hit your stomach. The stomach has time where it then goes into your intestines and it slowly, well, not slowly, but fairly fast, maybe within 5, 10, 15 minutes. It's now uptaking whatever's in your gut up into your bloodstream. And for glutamate, in my system in the past, like when I was really low redox, really dehydrated, I would have issues with um, just really crazy issues where within 10 minutes of eating like, let's say a bagel, cream cheese, um, or cereal, right, Re really bad food. This is back in my mid 20s. I could get visual spots to appear just from the glutamate, uh, not even considering, you know, something like a vaccine or something that is EMF related. They have different, like in a weird way, it's like, it's kind of like picking your poison. So <sighs> vaccines to me are like another kind of form of poison. And the reason why I say this and it's uh, like, again, it's my own observations and kind of my connections is that vaccines have a lot of stuff that does not belong in our bodies, but it's being injected directly into your muscle cells and your bloodstreams immediately picking it up. And it's not being like filtrated or slowed down by your gut. It's like immediately coming in, into your, rushing into your bloodstream. And depending on how things are, like if you're more dehydrated, your blood's slower, whatever, like this can have a dramatic impact, right? On how it's gonna affect you when you get this thing at that moment in time, just like, you know, concentration. So if I have higher concentrate glutamate, um, let's say I have like three jars of soy sauce, <laughs> not saying anyone's gonna have that because, you know, obviously the salt, concentration alone is going to be problematic aside from the MSG which is also a salt but um, just changing the blood chemistry right goes a long way right there but for vaccines you know aside from okay the aluminum the mercury like all these other things that they're finding that are also in certain vaccines that really shouldn't be there like chromium um, these can have like a catalytic catalyst kind of influence in ways because it's just like suddenly the body it's in the body it's it's being brought into the bloodstream immediately the body's like going whoa how do i deal with this well trigger the liver you know put, output things now in or the pancreas and output things into the bloodstream that can now counteract them if if, if it's if the right you know, um, agents aren't already present in the bloodstream or if the bloodstream isn't charged with enough energy or, you know, just all the factors, all the conditions involved. So that's, that's how I look at vaccines now. Like I look at vaccines as just another kind of poison and it can be the catalyst that really puts you over the edge or to me, um, you know, you, you take the wrong poison that could put you over the edge. You take the wrong, in my world, you take too much glutamate at one time, it can put you over the edge. In my world, if I'm touching the cell phone as it connects with a really high, you know, power density and I'm touching it, it can affect my world. If I'm going to the circuit breaker box and I stand in the box and I'm flipping the switches for a minute, it can affect my world. Like, it, it's like all the different things that 
can come into play, you know, people think maybe more about, you know, the general population thinks more about, oh, the, mo the body is wonderful and all these forces don't really have an effect, but in individual worlds, and individual experiences, these things can have an influence and an effect. Um, so, this is this is what I'm saying. Like, knowing these things, let's say I, a doctor or somebody is is gonna put a proverbial weapon to my head, saying you must take this drug or this vaccine, and you have to do it. And I'd be like, okay, I don't really want to, but since you're forcing me to, can you give me a week? And then they'd be like, all right, we'll give you a week. And then the ultimatum happens. You will have to take this toxic poison and it's good for you. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, I'll take the toxic poison because I know it's good for me. Um, so thanks for the week. So in that week leading up to, let's say it's a vaccine, I will hydrate like crazy. Um, knowing, let's say there's gonna be glutamates in it because Glutamates come from many different sources. It's in gluten, it's in casein, uh, it's in gelatin. It's, it's in all over the place because glutamic acid is a very common amino acid. I think it's the most common amino acid. So when you dry something out or, heat, or superheat it and you turn it into the salt version of that amino acid, you get a lot of glutamate. And it's that glutamate that in my system, because of how I work, I don't clear it out of my blood as fast. So it acts more like a poison in me, probably compared to other people. So what do I do a week prior to it? I go, okay, how does glutamate work? And what are other things that I can take in my diet that can help counteract glutamate, glutamate's impact on me? Well, number one is hydration. Getting everything good. Well, actually number one would be sun. It's like charging charging the water in my body with having good water because really good water is that gel like that gel formation you know like there's been a lot of videos about that recently about Pollock's work and about how you make better water in a person you know you go out to the desert you eat whatever cactus and well you don't eat it but like if you can get something into your body that can form more of a gel then you can store have more of a storage battery and having that um, the body can harvest the energy more rapidly when it might need to harvest it so it helps to counteract bad things that could happen and so you know you're not having your cells explode on you <laughs> or massive calcium efflexing um, to help compensate for that so I look at it from that perspective I'm like okay I want to get out into the nature get out into the Sun like right now with my tree with a tree against my back as I'm grounding charging my body I, I before I came out here I drank a lot of water so just the water in me in theory is charging being out here in nature now and I'm kind of like pushing the direction of redox better to a little higher now um, also I might choose foods that are more rich in in my world um, different amino acids that can help con uh, kind of like ward off glutamate's influence and in, for this particular instance if I know I'm having a vaccine like that could have a huge glutamate surge into the body instantly for instance like the MMR is made with MSG directly so I would I mean I personally would um, maybe have more egg uh, more taurine rich foods because the, I, I believe taurine competes with the glutamate receptors at certain receptor sites like at NMDA so if I just have more substance around in the body that's available to compete when glutamate comes in I might minimize glutamate's potency in my system to make it less excitotoxic so I kind of view it from this through this lens and I, and I do it that way and I, you know, I might be doing it wrong. I'm not saying I'm right here. I'm, I'm saying I do it this way because of how I've experienced eating food, having things into my system, whether it's energy or whether it's uh, or EMF sources or whether it's food sources that act negatively in my body. I can, I, I literally see or hear the differences. 
So I have this extra influence that I, I can like just gauge it by what thing is having more of an influence on me than this other thing because over long periods of time I know, oh, anytime I eat this particular food, within five, 10 minutes, I get, if I get spots in my vision, I know it's like a pretty darn huge impact what's going on if, especially like in this day and age, in the last two years, I've been doing the right things, getting outside more, um, you know, getting hydrated, like keeping hydrated, having a better water in my system. Now, that that's kind of the, the clarity of that word hydration needs to be really focused in here. It's like being able to create that gel and hold on to that water charge in your tissues. Like that's I think going to be the big takeaway because right mitochondria sit in those sit in the cytosol sit around in your cells that are just full of water. Your bloodstream has right heme in it and heme is then like it intersects with your mitochondria. So like when you think of blood, you, you kind of have to think of the impact, how your blood's working that has an impact on your mitochondrial function. So there's so much interrelationship here between the water, the sun, different frequencies and energies, and different biochemical compounds that can come in. It's just like a giant mush cascade of all these different variables and conditions. So certain things can, can push it up certain things can pull it down and hopefully we're all having good health all the time and it's you know at a good decent level and when something does come in that kind of zaps ourselves and we don't feel as good our bodies can deal with it and pull out the things it needs to compensate for it and we never get at a total loss in a certain way where you know a disease starts up so I guess I'm gonna leave it at that and and I just wanted to give you my perspective there where you know it's very easy to say this vaccine was a cause and we hear that a lot now but yeah it might have contributed to the cause for very many 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 factors and some of them could be a short-term factor some of them could be a midterm factor that took months to develop others other things could be very long term, like a very slow insidious poison where you're constantly getting like aluminum into your system, causing bad things over longer periods of time, just like EMFs. You could be sleeping in fields for months or years in EMFs that are just slowly pulling you down and no one really, a few people think in, in terms of shorter periods or most people think in periods of, shorter periods of time and not in like long, drawn out, slower poisons that are almost invisible, right? And it's kind of like, that's, that's why smoking is a great analogy here. It's like, a person could smoke 5, 10, 15 years and, you know, they're, they seem to be fine. They, you know, occasionally they cough, you know, after their cigarettes or whatever. And then, you know, by the time they're 50 or 60, they still are fine. Maybe they even stop quitting, they stop quit smoking altogether. And then another 20 years pass, and they get emphysema, and then they get lung cancer, and then they're like, okay, and the doctors say, it looks like this damage over the course of the last 40 years when you were smoking earlier in your life has caught up with you. So that's how I view EMFs when we don't even know we're in the smoke and you know a lot of these kids growing up are just in more have the chance of being in more fields without them even realizing it as well as this really accelerated vaccine schedule schedule as well as like all these you know crappy processed foods that you know act as also things the body has to deal with and, and extract out and get rid of try to take what it can from it as well as the lack of all of the healing around them so like parents are afraid of the sun they're afraid to even take their kid out to the park when they take their kid out to the park what do they do they slap sunscreen all over the kid and then they put a hat on the kid with sunglasses um, usually under a tree in the shade and the kids literally it's almost as if the kid is still indoors with all the extra toxins added and then this rinses and repeats for for 
maybe even years or for the rest of their lives and it just accelerates things into all badness or maybe you get the gymnast right that you know exercising all the time but always indoors under fluorescence doing their exercises in big gyms and you know the the amount of stress and inflammation potential going on there because of the accelerated schedule of having to be so fit so limber so you know crazy disciplined in their exercising routines but they're always under fluorescent lights they're not like outdoors doing this stuff usually um, they're not recharging their batteries i mean like it's it's really sad that we don't have more design just like our building designs things aren't built in such a way to allow more healing potential as to why at the end of this last year i, I did that image with hospitals like how i envision hospitals to be it's, it's like if they were built like a greenhouse you might have like crazy better like survival rates in hospitals just because you're allowing more sunlight into the hospital that alone goes a long way but instead we're getting the opposite we get less real light in and more fake light as in the form of ems and then now hospitals are built like you know 15 20 stories off the ground so there's no grounding going on on top of it anyway Hopefully this will be heard by somebody and something in it will be a little eye-opening to them, but take it for what it is. This is my observations. I'm not, like again, I, I could be wrong about a lot of these things, but it's like 46 years into my life, you know, 26 years ago, I was, my, my brain was completely backwards on this. And now everything's kind of come together and I've, I've benefited from it. My family's benefiting from it. So, there it is. Have a good one, guys. Scompy out.